Prime Minister to visit world superpowers. Child protection training for police recruits. And survivor wants closure after boat disaster. Good evening and welcome. This is Thursday's News. I'm Kilawani. Prime Minister James Marpe will be out of the country for the next 14 days, visiting two world superpowers, China and France. The visit to China is at the invitation of the Chinese president to witness the Winter Olympics. He will also hold commercial discussions while in China. Deputy Prime Minister Sam Basil will take care of the country for the next two weeks. Before leaving the country for the next two weeks, Prime Minister James Marpe says his focus for the trip to China will be on commercial discussions, despite the invitation from Chinese President for the Winter Olympics. Uh, invite me, I have to go and give respect where it is due. And giving respect where it is due and then in the process, pitching a country of the balance of LNG's uh, total tendency we have, as well as the potential of the other downstream sector. But in this instance, our first priority is to step out there uh, at the commercial discussions, asking them to buy our producers and bringing back downstream processes into our country. Leaving the country with Prime Minister will be Minister for Commerce and Industry William Sam, Petroleum Minister Karen Gakua and Fisheries Minister Dr. Lino Tom. They will be accompanied by Eastern Highlands Province Governor Peter Numu and Manus Governor. Marpes says by now the country should step into downstream processing. We already have oil, oil palm, which is in downstream process in its primary stage. And so uh, we want to move into space and uh, my travel uh, through China as well as through France. Uh, and later on in, in March, April, I uh, will be visiting Indonesia. Uh, it's in the context of informing the economies closer to us, especially those that we have strong bilateral partners, including Australia, that we uh, open for businesses to come in, especially in the downstream processing. Marpe is hoping that discussions that will be made will come to reality. Five years from now, you could have industries in our country producing our raw resources into finished products and sending them back to the overseas market as well as supplying our local market. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister will also be going to France for similar discussions after his trip to China. So my trip onward to France as a link to this sort of, uh, uh, as a link to the Chinese trip for us to convey to Total that the market is okay in China and you could go ahead with pre-feed, uh, completing feed and of course on your way to making a financial investment decision uh, early next year, if not uh, right through next year. Podivai National MTV News. The Marpe Basile government presented another 100 million kina to BSP Financial Group Limited this morning as part of the SME Credit Enhancement Facility. This is the second batch of 100 million kina promised by the national government in 2020 to be rolled out to support SMEs in the country. The presentation was made at the Jackson's International Airport prior to the Prime Minister's departure. In 2020, the Credit Enhancement Facility was launched with 100 million kina presented to BSP Financial Group Limited, while 80 million kina went to National Development Bank for lending to SMEs that would meet certain requirements with the two banks. Whilst BSP was able to implement this fully and effectively, NDB experienced challenges in getting off the ground as changes in the board and management took place over time. NDB has, however, managed to commence lending out to SMEs in various categories eventually, although progress is slow. The Prime Minister ensured the second lot of funding meant for year 2021 was made this morning to continue support for SMEs prior to him travelling overseas to have dialogue with potential business investors, particularly for downstream processing activities. Uh, almost 300 businesses have gone to BSV already Correct. Uh, in the partnership we're having with the SME lending. Now, I could be sitting or the treasurer could be sitting in and the commerce minister writing checks in our offices, but uh, we'll be giving to people who may not have a good return on our economy. Our partnership with bank uh, and BSV has worked wonders. Uh, we commit for 100 million every year for 10 years. 
so that BSP could have that as an added layer of security and land for companies who want to be in the space of business. <coughs> More than 300 businesses have benefited from the first 100 million kina that was allocated to BSP with the largest bank in the country aiming to expand its rollout with the second batch of SME funding. And it's not just lending the money out, it's ensuring that the customers are able to repay those loans and that's been as big success as providing the loans in the first place that the majority of those customers continue to repay loans that ask BSP's capability to claw back on the Credit enhancement schemes only seen less than 1 million kina in those facilities having to be accessed by way of the trust funds that we have in trust. And now we're looking to ensure that with the assistance of Department of Commerce and Industry, we can get more traction outside of Port Moresby and Ley and get more of our customers in the other regional centres with the assistance of Commerce and Industry to be able to provide ongoing lending <coughs> to the lifeblood of the country, which is the SME market. And we thank the government for supporting the scheme. Yep. Thank you, Prime Minister. Prime Minister James Marape also affirmed the national government's commitment of 100 million kina a year for SMEs through BSP over 10 years. Now, I'm travelling the world today, especially China and, 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 and France, looking for investors to come in at major scales, those who will be in partnership with local business for the downstream sector. Now, those of you who own log patches or forest patches, uh, you could be in the logging business yourself and we sell to the downstream processor we're looking for. Those of you already own coffee, you should be in the coffee space yourself. So we sell to the downstream processor we're looking for. It, that will come in and partner our major PNG companies. And so I just want to encourage Papini, don't be lazy out there. Allow those who are working, work, but rest of you, including graduates, you already own land in your, in your districts and home. Go back to the land and I just quote. Denny Sorere, National MTV News. A survivor of the Rabaul Queen tragedy in 2012 is calling for the state to intervene and provide solace to the families and survivors of the sea disaster. After 10 years, Ezekiel Sauber recalls the final moments before the passenger vessel capsized off the coast of Morabe. He is calling for the state lawyer to resurrect the case and find closure by compensating families affected in the maritime incident. February 2nd marks 10 years of one of PNG's worst maritime accidents, the capsize of MV Rabal Queen off the coast of Morobe. Ezekiel Sauber, one of the few survivors, recalls how the sea mishap took place in the early hours of the morning. He recalls the final moment. Sitting, go down now. I was standing there at the left hand side of the deck, on the big deck here. I can, my hand can touch the water, touch the sea, dynamically. And then, how many people touch him? The city, you know, come go back and sit down go to the post assembly, that's like killer wave come. And we come and we capture him this like boat, or someone play little cannon at him. And we capture him in split of a second. Now all man inside long seat, no land, only no ready. Only thing was him, only with the experience in this like through the night he come. Now only thing was him, it's no more. And then, we lost many of them. Ten years on, Saubo said the tragic moment remains fresh. He says the struggle to survive out at sea was not near helpful. Saubo said survivors had to support each other awaiting relief from state agencies and foreign container ships crossing PNG waters. Now we weak over time sit down, then we play water set all the they use uh on the gun, only shoot the water long rope, we play mar set, that's when only control me play. Pulling, 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 come out of the plane, or lose him steady, come down. Then we play climb on the seat. We play climb on the seat, na we play four plus safe, na na play two plus long plane. After seat is only safe finish, but then only lose, low, we play safe, more so. That's when only kissing me, play, go inside, low, lay, na we play go low up, only go lose him, we play low up, only interview me, play. According to Sauber, the last court case was heard in East New Britain regarding manslaughter. He said the previous government did assist with funding but was struck out with no proper evidence. With many families remembering their loved ones yesterday, he is appealing to the state to assist complete the court case and provide comfort to those affected. Former government, Peter O'Neill, only helping me, pushing this case to come forward, 
But we appeal to Igo Long, uh, our current government, to at least look at this one and some way they can push for it. Now, even me plan up pushing me at the court, then they should support us. Now, me plan up pushing me at the court long. Find him some solution, you know, like, uh, heavy been come up to me plan. I think our last court, me plan been court long and been long about long 162 men slaughter case, which without, you know, proper uh, evidences collected and then uh, it was struck out. Over 300 passengers died during the maritime accident. Jack Lopava Jr. National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. More stories after the break. Welcome back to the news. The Bomana Police Training College has endorsed a fully incorporated child protection training modules into its new approved curriculum. This is for new police recruits who will be attending the training college. This was made possible with support from the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and UNICEF. The Child Protection Training Module was crafted within the framework of the protection of children of Papua New Guinea laid down by the National Child Protection Policy and the Lookout in Pikini Act 2015. This training module will educate new police recruits and experienced police officers on providing improved policing services for children in need of care and protection as well as child victims or survivors of violence. This training will ensure police are better equipped with knowledge and capacity to reach more children in need. Police officers serving in the field will also attend a certain introduction of child protection training course. It is expected that around 50 operational officers will be the first to benefit from this training this year. And over 100 new police recruits will be trained early next year. This training will include a three-day child protection course for recruits and one-day training for experienced officers. This achievement in strengthening child protection policing was led by the Bomana Training College with support from the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and UNICEF. Bomana Police Training College Command and Assistant Commissioner John Colopen says this training is the first of its kind in PNG as there has been no specific child protection training in their curriculum. The Assistant Commissioner further adding that they are committed to strengthening police response to matters involving children and they are working to ensure children at risk of violence are supported with policing services. He further thanked UNICEF and the Australian Federal Police in their support to better protect the children of PNG. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. Eastern Highlands Provincial Assembly will soon pass a law for a better market strategy and management of its market facilities. Governor Peter Numu said this will see proper management from farm to selling points. The new legislation is expected to be tabled in this year's assembly meeting. Governor Numu said the provincial government embarks to support and grow its agriculture sector. He said one key area is to build market facilities in LLG's district and at the provincial level. Numu said construction has started in some communities with funding both from the provincial and national government. We will announce that one million kina, okay, the provincial government also put aside one million kina for Enganofi market, Enganofi, uh, which will be constructed at Enganofi station. And uh, kind of to market, I believe four million kina was released by national government to kind of to district and the member is taking courage of that uh, uh, kind of to DDA and uh, Gorka rural market uh, member is uh, Gorka member is said putting aside one million for Gorka district market and uh, also uh, will build a cost of one million for. Uh, Daulo market and uh, another uh, one million for Okapa market. He added that the new market strategy is to provide a robust framework or chain of business for small farmers. Numu said this will see fresh produce reaching markets, cut out the middleman business, and see a faster selling time frame. He is confident this will impact farmers across Eastern Highlands. So those who have access to markets or those who have contract with uh, hotels and supermarkets and all this, it's our duty now to go and look for them. 
I'll talk to the Goroka MP and uh, we'll work together to, to look for these people. And they will come and station themselves in those uh, areas. They will do two things. Number one, they will pay rent to the LLG to create revenue for the local level government. There's Mimanalo and Gaoko. So that they will use those money to develop the town of Goroka area. According to Governor Numu, the Eastern Highlands Provincial Assembly is expected to pass a legislation in the coming months. Numu said this will ensure all market facilities are managed well and farmers earn something using the new market strategy. To create a wealth for your people, because our strength is in agriculture. Agriculture is our backbone. So as the government, Look, look beyond place you're all not looking at because agriculture is the bad one. And then maybe talk will go to that direction. Maybe we'll go to this direction through agriculture. So the strength of your people, my people, is in agriculture. So that's why I'm focusing on making sure that all those infrastructures are in order. Jack Lepava Jr., National M TV News. As declining production levels for commodities in PNG's agriculture sector become a concern, key resource projects remain economic drivers. Employment numbers in the agriculture sector also pose concerns overall. However, improvement in employment is expected in the retail and other sectors of the economy in 2022, according to BSP Financial Group Limited. President of the Farmers and Settlers Association, Wilson Thompson, expressed concerns on the agriculture sector last month, particularly for coffee, where increased fees and charges put in place by the government are affecting farmers. Well, right now, the world uh, price for coffee is 10 kina per kilo. That's on the petsman. But right now, if you go to Goroka, the farmers are paid 8 kina. Where did the 2 kina go? The 2 kina has been collected by the government straight off. But in that, it's, uh, that token excludes the money that the CIC collects. It's called a research and extension levy. For every kilogram, they collect two toya, and that's the one we're also questioning. Where do they provide? They don't have a research institute. However, BSP CEO Robin Fleming, in forecasting economic activity for PNG this year, says despite surcharges, coffee has done well on the world market for PNG and hopes that the national general elections will not affect coffee production. Putting aside the fact there may be certain charges or surcharges being deducted or applied to some of those agricultural receipts, most certainly coffee price is strong and you're likely to see you know, good coffee season this year. Unfortunately it does coincide with the election and we're hoping that the that election won't disrupt and disturb too much of the coffee harv harvesting. Some of the agri other agricultural sectors are also quite positive and you do see a bit of a two-paced or three-paced economy around PNG and the agricultural-based areas. And retail activity remains strong. Mr Thompson shared particular concerns in the decline of coffee production over time as a result of farmers not earning what they expect with the world market price. What has happened is that coffee production it's going down. Like in 1975, we used to have one million bags of coffee that just be produced. And it used to be produced by only five or six provinces. And we had a population of two million people. But now, we have 10 million people, and we've got coffee grown in almost uh, 16 provinces. But the production is not even one million. It's gone down to 800,000 was in 2020, 2020 and then in 20, uh, in 20. 20, it has gone down to 600,000 bags. Apart from coffee, production levels for other commodities in the country have also been on a decline. And in fact, coffee production has gone down. Cocoa production is going down. Rubber production is going down. What else? Coconut has gone down. We don't know where it is. It has disappeared. It used to be a very big, uh, one of the first industries. We used to have uh, plantations, uh, uh, copra plantations and rubber plantations. They were the first crop that we introduced in PNG. But at the moment, we don't see any more copra and rubber. They're gone. And what is happening is the government has taxed it. It's taxing the smallholder farmer. It's just getting everything, so nobody wants to. The coconut trees are standing, but nobody wants to work. We're looking for, even though the, 
the total numbers in employment may not have increased considerably, there's still increasing opportunities for people to be employed across BSP during the course of this year we'll be employing an extra 100 to 120 people around PNG and I'm sure other businesses are in a similar phase where they look to see how they need to structure their work workforce to meet that future demand. Discouraging people, like the government is putting so much money focusing on agriculture, but now in Goroka they know that the world market price is 10 kina, but they realise that they're getting 7 kina. So who would want to go and work in the coffee? So these are the kind of things. So what we need is real data that must come out from uh, the commodity boards. Send that, well, we got 100 million kina that was put into the coffee or into the cocoa. But where is that production? What happened to all that money? Where did it go? So we've got a very big gap that needs to be addressed. Dennis Orere, National MTV News. And now looking at the Nest Fund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina is buying 0.2775 US dollars, 0.3854 Australian dollars, 0.4151 New Zealand dollars and 31.17 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee and cocoa closed higher, copper closed unchanged, crude oil is trading higher, palm oil closed unchanged and copper closed higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the ASX 200 is trading higher and the All Ordinaries is trading higher. You're watching National MTV News, Trukai Sports is next, stay tuned for the details. Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. A combination of boxing, kickboxing and other martial arts disciplines is considered as mixed martial arts. Those that train in mixed martial arts here in Papua New Guinea say it is a discipline and have been learning skills like submission moves, grappling and striking, moves that are quite popular in MMA. Mixed martial arts has grown as a popular global sport Commonly referred to as cage fighting, these men don't fight in cages, but are incorporating striking, boxing, kickboxing and other forms of martial art disciplines. The integrated mixed martial arts gym in Port Mosby gives the opportunity to practice mixed martial arts in a safe and controlled environment. Herman has been an instructor and a student and showed some of his skills. We are more like a family here, so when the team moves, everyone moves. You know, it's more like a camaraderie thing in, in, in this gym. So uh, from being just a grabbler, I start to do striking, and then it sort of gained, it sort of gave me more discipline in a lot of uh, a lot of things in other aspects of life as well. Because uh, in everything you do, it's almost the same thing as what you practice. Talakami, an all-round athlete, so to say, played rugby league. He is an avid amateur boxer, but also an impressive mixed martial artist. Like any other martial art, it just teaches you humility. It teaches you um, just not to judge others by what they look like, because they could actually be the most dangerous person. You know, um, you never know who. Um, who the good fighters are until you fight them. So it just teaches you to be humble. That's one of the, the most important things I think it teaches young men especially. Um, it teaches you about discipline, uh, courage, integrity. These are the things that martial arts uh, will instill in anybody. But most that train are all-rounders. But sound of kicks and punches onto heavy bags shows boxing and kickboxing are an integral part of any MMA training regime. For Junior Kaukoraka, PNG professional boxer, 
Being a boxing instructor at the gym, he also finds support with his fellow fighters from other disciplines. We meet him, meet, meet up on them all, uh, Isabel, uh, Tala, na, all is like Patrick, no mangi. So we meet up on them all, we play me game, strong black team, we meet up on them. Like so all games play me, also strong me, na, support me, lo, before me go to the ring, lo, side of sparring, side of training, na, all this. Like. So yeah, I'm low side of training. So. And that ends Trukai Sports, the weather forecast after the break. Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. Weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. Southern region, Port Mosby and Kerma, mostly fine and cloudy. Mostly fine and windy for Daru. Alotau and Popondeta, cloudy with a shower or two. For the Mamase region, Lei, mostly fine and cloudy. Cloudy with some showers for Medang, Wiwek and Vanimo mostly cloudy with possible shower or two. Looking at the New Guinea Islands region, Lorangau, Kavian, Kokopo and Robao, cloudy periods with patchy rain, Buka and Kimbe rain showers. For the Highlands region, Mount Hagen rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Cloudy periods with rain results possible for Goroka and Kundiawa, mostly fine and partly cloudy for Mendi and Wabeg. Forecast for small crafts for the next 24 hours. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border to Daru to Kiwai Islands to Kerama seas 2 to 3 meters. Waters of Daru through Gulf of Papua to Yule Island to Hood Point to Samurai Island seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Samurai Island to Eastern and Western Millen Bay Islands seas 2.5 to 3 meters. Waters of Millen Bay Islands to Cape Vogel to Huon Gulf to Finchafen seas 1 to 2 meters. Waters of Finchafen through Vitia Strait to CRC and Long Islands to Kendrian and Gasmata, and with waters of New Britain and Bougainville, seas 1.5 to 3 meters. Waters of Long Island to Karkar to Bogia, to Wiwek to Vanimo to northern PNG Indonesian border, with waters of Manus and its western group of islands, and with waters of New Island, seas 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Ocean forecasts for PNG areas, coral seas, seas rough to very rough with northwest winds of 35 to 47 knots, Solomon seas, seas moderate to patches rough with northwest winds of 20 to 25 knots, Bismarck seas, seas moderate with northwest winds of 15 to 25 knots, and Pacific Ocean seas slight with northeast winds of 10 to 25 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. And that's the new sports and weather for today, Thursday, 3rd of February 2022. On behalf of the news team, have a pleasant evening. Bye for now.